In the last video I showed you how to make a basic pivot table. So it took a big wadge of data and analyzed it so it's easier to make sense of that information. In this video I'm going to show you a few of the tips and tricks that I use to make pivot tables even more powerful. The first one is called drill down. This is incredibly useful. A lot of the time when you're looking at data what you're looking for is the things that look unusual. So I'm looking at this data here and I spot there's a couple of numbers that look quite large. This number there, which represents the number of fig rolls that Dave ate. And I might be wondering, where did that number come from? With a pivot table, it's really easy to find out where a number came from. Just simply double click that number. And this is going to create a brand new sheet for you. You can see this down here is sheet number two. And it's going to create a copy of all of the relevant rows of information that came from my underlying data table and paste them into this new sheet here. It's incredibly useful. So in terms of if I want to know all of the fig roll biscuits that Dave ate, this is a list of them. This works for absolutely any number on here. This number here represents all of the jammy dodgers that were eaten in total. Where's that information from? There it is. It tells me all of the jammy dodger information. Think of this as like the ultimate filter. Anything you're interested in, where did it come from? Double click there, that's where it came from. The only slight downside of this is that you do end up with quite a lot of extra sheets down here, but you can just delete those as you go. The next technique I'm gonna show you is all about changing the way that the data looks. At the moment, this pivot table is showing me the sum of the amount of biscuits. And I can see that here it says sum of the amount. Excel just automatically guessed that I wanted to show the sum of the amount and as soon as I dragged amount there it changed automatically. But what if I wanted to show something different? If I click onto where it says sum of amount and go to value field settings you can see that there are loads of other choices. So here are what I call the usual suspect choices. So you've got things like average, min and max. My guess is that most of you will know what those do and can probably imagine how my pivot table would change if I chose them. Now they're all good. Something else I want to show you which is less obvious but I think even more useful. And there's a little tab up here that says show values as. At the moment it's showing values as normal but if I use this little drop down you've got all kinds of other choices. I'm just going to show you a couple of examples which I think are really useful. First one I've got is percentage of row. If you look in the background before I choose it, oops, what we've got in is the person and the number of biscuits that they ate across the entire week. If I choose percentage of row, OK, it now shows me everything as percentages. In other words, this number 48 means that of all of the biscuits that Andy ate, 48% of them were jammy dodgers. Now this can be really, really useful to not show the actual values here, but to show the percentages of something. As an alternative, let me show you the values as a percentage of the total. And now this 7.53% means that of all of the biscuits that were consumed across the entire week, 7.53 were down to Kath and her liking for fig rolls. I really like this idea. They'll be able to be able to change and show these not just as values, but as a percentage either of the row or of the column or even of the grand total. I'm going to get back to where I was by pressing Control Z, Control Z, which means undo, undo. Okay, next one I'm going to show you is how to represent this information, not as a table with values, but as a chart. Most of the time, if you've got a lot of information to display, the best way of communicating that is by representing it graphically. Excel, as you probably know, is fantastic at creating charts, and I can do something very similar with pivot table data. It doesn't really matter which cell you've got selected, so long as it's somewhere within the pivot table, and go up to the top ribbon. Now, you're looking for a ribbon now which is above the normal ribbons, which looks like slightly pink. It's called pivot table tools. So this gives you all of the pivot table options and the one I'm looking for looks like a chart so it's called pivot chart. That gives me all of the normal charts that I've got um, available in Excel and I can choose one of them to apply to my pivot table data. I'm going to just choose the standard 2D clustered column chart. OK to that and this creates automatic for me a chart 
and also opens up this pivot chart filter pane. I don't really need that, so I'm going to close it down for the moment. So this table is now represented with this chart, which is, first of all, brilliant, but what's great about this particular chart is it's interactive. Just like the pivot table is interactive, so is this chart. So if anything changes on the pivot table, for example, I just want to have a look at the yellow team, bang, the chart changes straight away. Go back to everyone and just say I want to see the 1st of April's information. I can very quickly see Andy ate a lot of biscuits that day. So I think that this is certainly uh, what I would want to end up with in terms of my data analysis. Something which is represents the data graphically, but also gives my users the ability to interact with it via some filters. Next thing I want to talk about in terms of pivot tables is what happens when the underlying data changes. This pivot chart here is based on this pivot table here. This pivot table here is based on this data here. So what happens when that information changes? I'm going to change one of the amounts here. I'm going to change it to something very different so we should be able to easily see that change. And go back to my pivot table and pivot chart. You'll notice that neither the table nor the chart has changed to reflect that. The data that I changed was Andy's figure all consumption. At the moment, it's still showing that Andy's fig roll consumption on the 1st of April was 4, represented by this red bar here. This is weird at first, and the reason we think it's weird is because we're so used to Excel being dynamic. When we've got formulas in Excel, almost by magic, if the underlying data changes, the answer changes. Now, this doesn't happen automatically in pivot tables. But it's very easy to make that change happen. I just need to refresh the data manually. To do this, I go back to the pivot table toolbar, so this pink one up here, and then press the button that says refresh. And then you'll see straight away that the pivot table changes to reflect that change, and then the pivot chart changes automatically as well. The last tip I'm going to show you to do with pivot tables I can't really demonstrate using this simple pivot table, so I'm just going to show you something which is similar, but a little bit more complex. Imagine that I don't have just a small amount of data, like so, which is for a week's worth of biscuit consumption, but I've got a much bigger set of data, and I've been basically monitoring who's been eating which biscuits over a couple of years. So, if I want to create a pivot table of that, I just do exactly the same as I did before. Select one cell, insert, pivot table, OK. And I could do all of the things that I've just done with this pivot table, and it would give me very similar information. For example, if I wanted to, I could see who's eaten which type of biscuits, like so. Now, what I wanted to show you in terms of this is what happens if I use the day field. When I look at my data, you can see how I've got dates that start in April and go all the way through till 2014. So when I take the information and look at it by day, at first glance it doesn't seem to give me a very useful pivot table because I've got all of this different information so every single day is recorded, which means the pivot table is almost as long as the data set itself. So this last little tip that I wanted to show you is something which I think is incredibly useful. What I can do in a pivot table if I've got dates is I can right-click over any one of those dates and go to group and Excel is clever enough to pick up on the fact that these are dates and therefore says well do you want to group them together and it gives you lots of different choices by month by quarter and by years I'm going to choose months and years and okay and look how clever that is breaks it down into each of the different years and then within that each of the different months and gives me the grand total of biscuits within that month and I could of course break that down by biscuit if I wanted to I'll be honest with you, I've only just scratched the surface of all the fantastic things that you can do with pivot tables, but I just wanted to show you some of my favourite tips and tricks with this incredibly powerful tool. I hope you found this useful. Good luck with your pivot tables. Thanks for watching.